Okay. So welcome. <laughs> I am Tezekiah Gabriel from Pathways to Peace. Welcome to 40 years of celebrating peace through story and song. And it is my absolute honor to be able to, uh, to introduce our host for today. Um, and he is our very own Masanko Banda. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Masanko and then turn the program over to him. So um, in addition, as you heard, if you were here earlier, uh, we are kind of launching our 40th year anniversary of Pathways to Peace and also the honoring of our beloved founder, Avon Madison, who was instrumental in establishing the International Day of Peace um, in 1981. So welcome to Peace Day, welcome to the celebration. And now, Masako Banda is an internationally renowned consultant, peace builder, performing artist, and cross-cultural activist based in Malawi. His inspiring efforts in peace building and creating diversity got him an unsung hero award from His Holiness the Dalai Lama in 2001. Masanko is a multidisciplinary performing artist, certified interplay leader, educator, and peace builder. He brings many unique perspectives to his work around the world. He learned the fine arts of storytelling and dance from his Malawian culture, spending many long days and nights listening to stories and dancing to music that captivated his mind, shaped his being, nourished his soul, and strengthened his spirit. Using performing arts, Masanko motivates and inspires people of all ages to work together to bring about peace, social justice, and cultural understanding. And Masanko is one of our own. He is a council member for Pathways to Peace. And as we honor Avon today, Avon lovingly called Masanko her son. So before we get going, Masanko, um, as we always do, we're just going to take a moment to come into heart center, opening our hearts, opening our minds. So we would invite everyone here to just slow your breathing and breathe a little more deeply. Just relax into this beautiful space of peace. See that all around the world, 1.6 billion people are celebrating peace with us in this moment. See that activity, that singing, that dancing, that celebration. And let's join our hearts and spirit to that energy of peace washing around our planet. And as we breathe, let's just focus on the heart right there in the center of our chest. And our, allow our breath to come in and out of that sacred space. That heart space where peace and compassion, harmony, unity, gratitude, kindness, all of it exists right there within the heart of each of us. And now let us join our hearts as we come back into this place of celebration, this time of song and story. 
let us come back to the sacred space, bringing all that beautiful energy with us here and now. Thank you. And now, Masanko, I turn the floor over to you. There you go. First, it first told me that I couldn't unmute myself, and I was like, "Oh no, I have been <laughs> finally been silent." <laughs> oh, let's all take a deep breath. Oh, thank you so much uh, to Zekaya for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Um, and I wish we could give a long introduction to everybody that is speaking and sharing tonight, but unfortunately, time is very limited, but I will do my best to at least, um, as people uh, are highlighted and as people share their song and story, to give at least a little bit of an intro. So let's all take a deep breath together. Uh, I want to begin by sharing this song. It's a very simple song. And it goes like this. Dakuona, 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 Moni. I see you, I see you, I see you, hello. And I want to start with this song because even though I've just crossed into the sixth floor, it was 30 years ago just before I crossed into the 30th, into the third floor, that I met Avon and Joni, who is on this call. Hi, Joni, and David, and uh, Marilyn King. And when I met Avon, she did something that she always does when she finds and meets a young person who has the potential to create peace. She says, come, let you and I create peace together. Dakuona is I see you. I see the human in you that sees the human in me. And when I met Avon 30 years ago, 10 years into her journey, she said, Masanko, I have an assignment for you. And I said, oh, would you like me to go buy some groceries? Or would you like me to type something? She said, no, I would love you to go to Croatia and work with the children who have been victims of the war after the breaking up of Yugoslavia. I said, wow, that's different from going to buy a loaf of bread or make some breakfast or type a note. But you know, Avon had that ability to ask and all you could do was say yes. And I found myself flying all the way to Pula Croatia, where for three years, under her guidance and teaching and mentoring, I went with my drum and my songs and spent time with the kids that had been traumatized by the war. 30 years later, I still get the occasional email, Facebook, 
that says to me, Masanko, thank you so much for coming to dance with us. Thank you so much for coming to sing with us. Thank you so much for coming to allow us to share our story and transform the trauma that we had gone through into the peace that we now enjoy. Dakuna, Dakuna, Dakuna Moni. And the thing about that trip is that we had only met for about a week, but she was able to see in me as she has seen in so many other young people, that potential to create peace. And so that is why for today, the International Day of Peace, and in December, when we celebrate the official 40 years of the work of Pathways to Peace, I thought we have to invite people to bring stories, to bring songs that have transformed individuals and communities all over the world. And as I look at all of you that I can see on the screen, and even those of you that is just a name, I know that wherever she is, she is smiling because we are continuing her legacy. We are continuing her dream. As I see young Wayne on this screen, as I know uh, Garrett is somewhere on this screen, young people who are saying, no, we are going to create a world that is different, from the one that is there now. And so I am so excited. I've already kicked it off. Simple little song, simple little story that begins our hour of time together amongst all that has been created during this Peace Week and during this 40 days and culminating in the time we'll be celebrating in December. So I am so excited. I am so happy. And now, as I said, that time 30 years ago, David was there. We've both gotten grayer in here, a little broader in our shoulders. <laughs> but the one thing that hasn't changed our smile and our dedication to peace. Unwavering, unfalter, unfal unfaltering dedication to peace. And so my brother, my mentor, my colleague, David, who is also a member of the Pathways to Peace Council, a lifetime peace advocate, Please, David, take us away into the next <laughs> Thank you, thank you, dear brother. It's wonderful to be here and see you all. This is a, a great time to, of sharing. Um, and I also just want to acknowledge that the reason that we're here, that we're here and that the International Day of Peace is what it is, because a four-year-old girl had the vision that was Avon Madison at four years old. She had a vision that a world peace of what that can be. And that vision inspired her entire life. One of the major um, achievements, one of the major influences that she had was with the United Nations helping to encourage and move forward the creation of the International Day of Peace. And I have a document that I want to read some of the parts with you, and then we'll see her 
in the video. I just want to share. So this is one of our documents. Uh, it is the third in the 36th session of 1981, the United Nations General Assembly voted to set aside a specific day and time each year to promote the ideals of peace and to give positive evidence of mankind's commitment to peace in all ways. That resolution in November 30, 1981, was to declare the International Day of Peace as a part of the uh, United Nations and for all peoples and all nations to come together and to commemorate a, an appropriate manner it, the International Day of Peace, especially through all means of education. That was in 1981. 1982 was the first acknowledgement of the International Day of Peace. And what happened then was the member states in the General Assembly stood for a moment of silence acknowledging the International Day of Peace, which is nice, but even saw this is not only what it should be. So that was the prompting of, of in 1983 of creating the International Day of Peace project that Pathways to Peace to move forward um, with Robert Mueller. He was the Assistant Secretary General at the United Nations. And he saw that this was the essential part to bring humanity together. He said, yes, that's fine to have the, the delegates and the um, ambassadors have a moment of silence, but it really is about bringing civil society, about bringing all members of our uh, global community together. Then he said on that day, there would be such a powerful support that these delegations would work together more successfully. It would be a worldwide communion in spirit of all people on earth. That was his vision. Moving forward, Pathways to Peace had the, the vision and the guidance with Avon to in 1984, create the first civil society major event of the International Day of Peace. It bringing together many nations, inspiring this whole work that has spread throughout the world. And she had organized, we brought together for over a year, many members of different parts of the community in San Francisco to plan this amazing event, which became a, a noted uh, departure from whatever has happened before. And think about today with hundreds of millions of people around the world. And as was mentioned, a billion people. It is huge, but it had this beginning of inspiration of a four-year-old girl and moving forward in the, the broader perspective of all people are pathways to peace. Thus, we are here together. And if you'd like to share the video of Avon uh, Tezekiah, please. So when did you actively start uh, initiating some planning for an International Day of Peace? That began when I was a student in Washington, D.C in 1961 when I met Valentin Gamel. Uh. And I saw these circles as an opportunity to begin to seed this idea. So after we had had enough of the meetings on a monthly basis, I began to work because each of them came from a different country. And I said, what would you think if we all worked together with, again, with your particular ministries um, and with your nations that we might create a universal day of peace that could be adopted by a UN resolution. So that began in 1961. And 20 years later, a resolution was passed. But once I moved to San Francisco, where I never lived before, um, that was in 1975, and began that process right away. And I became connected at that time with um, someone who was very, probably one of my dearest uh, longtime colleagues, 
Robert Mueller, known as Robert Mueller, who was Assistant Secretary General of the UN and was with the United Nations for 40 years. Once we had built up that deep rapport um, by correspondence, I rang him up and said, I have something very important that I've been carrying with me for a very long time, and I need to ask for your assistance and to see what you think of this idea. And so he began working his magic. And so Costa Rica was a wonderful candidate. And, he, and Oscar Arias um, had, had wanted to do something that showed his country's commitment to peace because they had abolished um, any kind of military right. in Costa Rica. So that seemed a very likely possibility. So that was one of the nations, and that actually ended up being the nation that sponsored, was the primary sponsor of the resolution. This was the first unanimous resolution that had to do with peace that involved every single nation of the United Nations. There had not been that level of accord, and this was historic. What it took was um, a lot of uh, people with within the UN and also members of civil society, like Ambassador John McDonald and others, to uh, meet with ambassadors uh, from the different embassies and missions and to uh, help to give the rationale for it and to find which countries would be delighted to support it so that there could be at least building up a majority. So it took a while to do that. More than a year? Oh, it takes more than a year, yes. And so the momentum finally building once the General Assembly met in session in 1981, enough preparatory preparation had been done, but then the resolution, the final resolution had to be agreed upon and every word had to be agreed upon and the date and the title had to be agreed upon of, of that. And that was quite a process. So what happened was that it changed from the original idea of World Peace Day to International Day of Peace because it was the United Nations and it was again during the Cold War still. Mm -hmm. So by using International Day of Peace, it helped bring it back to the nations and in a way help hold nations responsible for this and hopefully make this something that would be implemented implemented by all nations. Because this was historic, that all nations, even at war with each other, would agree to a universal day of peace. That is wonderful to see Aiden again telling the story. And there's there's more to that, but it's like, bless you, bless you, Aiden. But that is the energy, that is the spirit that she moved with. And so it is, here we are, 2023, moving on to 2024. It actually is quite noteworthy. Next year will be the 40th year since the major International Day of Peace in San Francisco in 1984. So the 40th continues in many ways. Hezekiah, thank you. Oh, thank you, David. Uh, yes, as you just said, so wonderful to hear Avon. Thank you so much for technology to hear Avon and to see Avon. May she continue to rest in peace and continue to inspire us um, to continue her legacy. And in that light, as I said, she had the talent for spotting young people who could run this race. And the next speaker, person that is going to share with us is such a talent. He is still a student, but he is very dedicated. And I know that peace building is in very safe hands. Garrett, take it away. Thank you, Masanka. Great to be here and happy International Day of Peace to you all. You know, one of the events from Pathways of Peace that really sticks out in my memory was when I interviewed Linda Blackman Lowry, who was the youngest person on the Selma to Montgomery march and who was stopped on the Edmund Pettus Bridge 
I'll never forget the lessons I learned from that brave and noble woman. I also was able to watch a play that one of her colleagues wrote called Turning 15 on the Road to Freedom, which was about her life, her childhood upbringing, and the civil rights work she did. But what particularly sticks out in my mind is when I asked her the question, if you could go back in time, let's say, and ask your younger self what one piece of advice that you would give her, I'll never forget what she told me. She told me that don't take your eye off the ball. You know, if things are going your way, it's easy to maybe get complacent to say, okay, you know, we got this one thing, let's relax now. But especially in the field of peace building, it's important to really stay devoted, never take your eye off the ball, and keep doing the peace building work that we're all here to do. You know, it, it's so important. And that's why Pathways to Peace is such a great NGO because, well, first of all, we're one of the first. Second of all, with 40 years of peace building, we have all that we need to guarantee us another 40 years of peace building. And it is such a great organization. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Garrett. Oh, you know, legacy is about ensuring that something will endure through time. And knowing that we have you in our council, knowing that we have you so dedicated, really gives us a sense of peace and a sense of joy because it's a long battle. Mm -hmm. And it needs dedicated people who are unwavering. Um, next you. up, with a song, um, Ray Anderson. Is Ray here? No, Masanko Ray sent, sent his regrets. He has a family okay. emergency, but he said he'd love to be here. All right. I can. No, no worries. All right. Well... In his absence, we have somebody equally dedicated. I have been so joyful to spend time on the council with her. She is a dedicated peace builder, activist, mother. Oh, so many adjectives that I could use. Erica, you're up next. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Sanko. It's lovely to see you. And happy International Day of Peace, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Um, a few reflections that I have today. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to sing because I have a little cold. <laughs> but I want to think about the lyrics to Imagine. And really, mm. just mostly the closing bars. Imagine, um, you know, they may say I'm a dreamer. I'm not the only one. Um, and that we could really dare to live as one. And this is true, this speaks to my core. And in some reflections about um, working with Pathways to Peace, it's, and the mission behind it is that peace is really comprehensive as well as individual. And I think about the peace wheel, for example, and how truly everyone is a pathway to peace. These are some of my favorite favorite memories and thoughts about doing the work together. And it is really, and we are all a path, pathway to peace through our own channels, through our own um, callings, if you will. And so one of the, the things that I've been reflecting on with, with my teachers and of course support from the council is, um, I'm waiting for my great assignment. I believe this to be coming still, um, but I believe I've been in training and, and today let's, you know, use this opportunity for me to come out and say that I'm a healer. I'm a healer um, and I'm ready to embrace this gift. Um, Tez, I was at ARC yesterday at a retreat and um, it was just really amazing to be in circle and deep prayer and to reflect upon um, the gifts of, of peace building and healing and what that can mean for each of us because we all are that pathway. And that is the beauty of, of this NGO that I feel so honored to support and be connected to all of you. Um, I look forward to uh, continuing the work 
and um, I may not be on that that young end of the spectrum, but I also could really with peace building think of my son. Uh, he is nine, and I want to be very intentional about planting seeds within him as well. Of course, he'll choose his own journey, but um, to think about just those that come after us and what that might look like for our world. So back to that, the comprehensiveness, it is individual, peace building is individual and it is comprehensive. And one of my big takeaways from yesterday was, you know, with healing or, or expanding um, our peace building skills is really just start with yourself and healing and then move it into your family and then your community. And so, um, you know, I really, I feel rising to the next level after doing some personal and, and healing with my family. So thank you for this time today. Um, blessings to all of you. May peace continue to prevail on earth. And I look forward to staying connected to many of you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much, Erica. And yes, you know, you have highlighted that we as parents, what we can do is pass on and open the doors and show our children the path they take. And, you know, the, the peace wheel shows us there's education, there's sports, there's health. So there's many different pathways to peace. And the key is that with our youth, we allow them to take the path that makes the most sense for them. Our next speaker, whom I haven't met, but I know that I will meet very soon, or I'll meet him now online, is, and I hope I pronounced the name right, please correct me if I don't, Reno Jani, um, who is a peace advocate, a youth action for peace, young people, Acting for Peace, Youth Action for Peace. He is from Albania, and he is a representative of Pathways to Peace to the United Nations. As you heard from David, when she was talking when the, in the video that he presented about Avon, it takes a lot of people to get things to move at the United Nations. So, Reno, Jani, we are so glad that you have joined us. Please share with us your um, observations on this International Day of Peace. Wow, okay. thank you. Thank you so much, Masanko. It is truly an honor to meet you and uh, to join our Pathways to Peace team here. Um, I'm going to read just a little bit of my inspirations on my peace building journey. Um, so I just want to say first that my name is Renaud Yanni, and I'm the program coordinator for the Nuclear Disarmament Advocacy and Research Program at Pathways to Peace. And I'm also a representative to the UN on behalf of uh, Pathways to Peace as well. I want to congratulate uh, our entire team on celebrating 40 years of peace building throughout the world. It is a true honor for me to join all of you today and to share a little bit about what inspired my peace building journey. Five years ago, I was introduced to Pathways to Peace by George Anthony, and I began working as a uh, representative to the UN. When I first connected with Avon, um, it, it felt like I was meeting someone that I knew for lifetimes. And, uh, our initial conversation was over four hours. <laughs> it felt like it was just a few minutes. <laughs> um, she quickly became a peace mentor and a mother to me. Um, she was the first person that I introduced my vision to create the Nuclear Disarmament Advocacy and Research Program at Pathways to Peace. And um, she, of course, gave her permission, um, which I was highly honored for. Um, she quickly understood the 
assignment <laughs> that I uh, quickly recognized after um, after I started to learn more about the nuclear disarmament movement and hearing testimonies and experiences from the Hibakusha survivors of the atomic bombings from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And uh, interestingly enough, the Treaty and the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which is the first nuclear, the first treaty, uh, legally binding treaty, that bans the production, usage, testing, and transfer of nuclear weapons, um, was just about, it was on its way to entering into force. It was adopted in 2017 after 122 states voted in favor. And it was on its way, but not quite yet. So when I first started this work, it was, um, it was, it, 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 it was a good way to support, along with several others, um, the entry into force of the treaty. And Avon understood my vision to, to advocate for nuclear disarmament in Albania and throughout the world. Um, and so that has led us to this point um, where uh, we are working here at Pathways to Peace with uh, government on different levels, local government, national government, parliamentarians in Albania, um, and uh, doing lots of different programs and, and, and uh, initiatives. So I just, I'm, I'm thankful that Avon believed in me. Um, she saw something in me that not everyone sees, which is that purpose and the mission to, to do this peace building work. Um, and she supported me in the beginning efforts. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, and we are, we are making great progress so far, uh, especially with our recent, um, uh, Balkan forum on nuclear disarmament. And I know even is, uh, happy to see that we're now going evolving to the next stages of our impact, our positive impact, which is something that even valued in theory and in practice. Um, so I I could go on and on <laughs> about the impact that even has had and the impact that each one of us at Pathways to Peace has had on my life. But I just um I just want to thank you all and, and congratulations. Um may our may our journey and our impact for peace building continue on. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Reno. So important, the work that you're doing and so important in reflecting on the impact that she has had on you, which is also the impact that she has had on so many young people. This journey that we are on transcends boundaries. Peace builders are found everywhere. Malawi, South Africa, Croatia, Uzbekistan. And so I am so happy to introduce a neighbor. Yes, there are two countries in between us, but South Africa is a neighbor. We are South Africans, South Africans are us. Natasha Singh Ali is also a member of uh, Pathways to Peace Council and a tireless fighter for freedom um, in South Africa and around the world. Natasha, share your thoughts. Welcome. Thank you, Masanko. It's such a privilege to be here. I was introduced to the Pathways to Peace just over three years ago. And it was overwhelming to meet with Avon. And as Renaud has indicated, for her to pick me out, identify me, embrace me and invite me into the pathways to peace. And it has been 
it has been really a heartfelt journey. And to just accept that Avon's invitation was quite simply that everyone is a pathway to peace and all I have to do is show up. And I want to thank everyone else on this call for helping me to show up. All the council members, Tezakaya, David, Nasanko, Renaud, Gareth, Erica, so, so many with different energy levels and unique talents. You know, mostly I show up in very serious ways for the pathways to peace with presentations and slide decks and, and all kinds of um, advice shoulder to the wheel. But today, really, I want to respond to the invitation for joy and song to come through in, in as best I can. So I want to share with you how I experienced peace as a very young person going to church, and I'll share a few lines with you there on a religious level. I also have mixed ethnicity in my family and my mom being Catholic, my dad being Hindu, my husband being Muslim. It has been a beautiful rainbow, not only in a country in South Africa of diversity and inclusion and harmony, but in my personal space to have so many cultures come through and resonate in my heart. So if, if you wouldn't mind allowing me some the ability to share my screen as well, please, Masanko, then I'd like to play out as well with a few notes. So let me start with, with a hymn and a few bars from that, that I, I remember brought me peace as a young person going to church with my grandmother. And it goes like this. Walk with me, O oh my Lord. Through the darkest nights and brightest days, be at my side, O oh Lord. Hold my hand and guide me on my way. Stones often bar my path, and there are times I fall, but you are always there. To help me when I call. Walk with me, O oh my Lord, through the darkest nights and brightest days. Brought me men's peace, even oh. though I'm not always on cue. Um, and I wanted to share that with you, you know, this, the start of my, my peace journey. I also want to say that many, many years later, when I went into the Himalayas and, and spent a day in silence and reflected and, and sort of did the practical work for myself and, and tried to understand where I fit into the world and, and what role I could play and how I could be of purpose. I was very touched by a Buddhist mantra that sends compassion out into the world. And I'd, I'd like to just share that with you. When Avon was alive and, and she made me feel even more alive, I was able to share that mantra on many videos and, and she thought it was really beautiful to have less words and, and more of, of, of these moments that resonate and ripple out into communities and I've been sharing it ever since in yoga practice and in in prayer circles and and sharing circles so I'll, I'll play a few of that a uh, few moments for, for you I hope you're able to hear it <laughs> Natasha did you check the little sound yeah. box original sound for musicians. No, um, it's, yes, just in the left-hand corner when you come into the share screen. Okay. Are you able to hear it though? Not really. Oh, okay. okay but if maybe you check that little box, it just says auto sound or something like that, depends on your computer. 
All right. Okay. Let me let me just send it out into the world as I normally would. Okay. Oh, Mani Padme Hum. Oh, Mani Padme Hum. Oh, Mani Padme Hum. Oh, Mani Padme Hum. Yes. Oh. If you can breathe into that and take it home with you. And Masanka, if you would allow me to just play out then with the last uh, more of a jingle that comes straight from Africa, resonated through our continent through COVID, was really very important at the time how it united the world. It went viral. It had so many shares that hospital staff were doing it at, at a difficult time. We even had airlines trying to, to put the choreography together. It really has had exceptional views up to a billion. And so I'm hoping this is, I'm able to play this for you, even if it's just in small part. Here we go, share screen. And this particular version has a Bollywood twist to it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, yes. Jerusalem, if I am me, Jerusalem, <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful way to. Oh, thank, thank you, you Natasha. Thank you very much. Uh, peace to everyone on this blessed day. Congratulations to the Pathways to Peace for the example you set and for the incredible leadership you will provide for the next generation. Bless everyone. Thank you, Thank you for the time, Sankar. Bless it to you. Thank you so much. And, you know, the, the song that you sang, Walk With Me, I always remember my decision walks that I would have with uh, Avon in the mountains of Marin. And as the walks got shorter, the depth of sharing became even more profound. Just amazing. So thank you so much for that song. Continuing on, um, again, I am meeting her for the first time here, Marlenis Rosa, a family service specialist for the New Jersey division. I think, I don't know if that is still um, what you are specializing in. But again, as I said, there are many pathways to peace and it is just so wonderful to have your expertise as a pathway to peace. Marlenis. Hi everyone. Um, thank you, uh, Masanko and hi to everyone that's here present, uh, those that I've met before and those that I haven't. It's great to be in this space um, as always remembering Avon and just remembering the essence of what Pathways to Peace stands for. Um, I do have a song to share with everyone, but first I wanna share a little bit about my pathway to peace and how the work that I've done, not just with the organization, but outside of the organization, kind of continues Avon's legacy and, and vision so many years ago. Um, so I'm a UN representative for Pathways to Peace, and I was introduced to um, Pathways to Peace by George Anthony, and then um, I worked closely with Tez and Avon, 
And I think for all of us that know Avon can attest to the fact that whenever you had a conversation with her or you were in a meeting with her, whether it was uh, physically on the phone, on Zoom, you just felt a sense of peace. And that's just what she always presented. Um, and I think even in spaces where she wasn't physically there, you still felt that sense of peace. And thinking about the name Pathway to Peace is amazing because what is a pathway to peace? It can be anything and in any shape. Um, each and every one of us here is a pathway to peace. Um, and the way that I think about it is uh, a puzzle. So a puzzle has many different pieces, different shapes and sizes. Um, but at the end of it, it's not always easy to put it together and it does take time. But once you put the puzzle together, it becomes a, a beautiful masterpiece. And, and that's more or less of the work that we do here with Path Pathways to Peace. Um, I specialize in working with uh, abused children in the US, um, similar to Tez's path and also working more so now with women and, and young girls to empower them and, and give them the opportunities that they need. So the song that I wanna share, I'm just gonna share it on the speaker um, in case there's a little bit of a lag, but it's called We Are Here by Alicia Keys. And I think it's an important song because it gives us a glimpse of, you know, the things that, that go on in the world and how it brings all of us together. And it's also a call to action for each and every one of us to, to work together and be there for one another. And also before I play the song, I just wanted to um, share why I do what I do with Pathways to Peace and it's my children. Um, I have a five-year-old daughter and a six-year-old um, son, and they are why I do what I do uh, day in and day out. And it's the sense of being intergenerational and being able to pass on the baton that Avon has passed on to each and every one of us. Mm. Mm. We, we can't hear. We are here. We are here for us. We are here for us. That's mm. why we are here. Why we are here. We are here. Bombs are back there. Trying to get some we never had. Let's start with a good dad. So real, but it's so sad. While we burning this incense, we gonna pray for the innocent. Cause right now it don't make sense. Right now it don't make sense. Let's talk about Let's talk about Let's talk about Let's talk about Right now it don't make sense. Let's talk about, let's talk Nigeria, in the most hysteria, yeah. Our souls are brought together so that we can love each other, brother, we are here. We are here for us. We are here for us. It's lagging. I don't know if it's just a mic on we are here, we are here, no guns made it wrong, they had crime as a problem, he wanna shine, they wanna rock, sing them all the way they come from, how we gonna save the nation, we're not so far for education, cause right now it don't make sense, right now it don't make sense, let's talk about what Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marlenis. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for putting it in the chat. I want to, it was, it's lagging on my computer. So I want to go listen to it um, again offline. So thank you for putting that in the chat. So wonderful. So inspiring. Now, did I see that Joni had to leave? Oh, such a shame. Um, Joni was one of I the believe Joni, I believe Joni is here. No, she oh, hasn't Joni, gone. Oh. Her phone is I on. I see but... an icon for yeah. her, but I don't know if she's still around. 
anyway, Joni was one of the is one of the co-founders um, alongside Ava Ways to Peace and has worked alongside Ava all of these years, a dedicated sister. They called each other sister friend, which I just love that. Um, and a lot of what I've been able to do at Pathways, the tra my travels around the world, uh, definitely um, because of the dedication that Joni has had towards the organization, both in terms of time, in terms of resources, I can't say enough. So I'm really sad that we don't get to hear from her. But if she pops up anywhere else during this week, please, please um, tune into her because she is an inspiration. Well, we have now come, we are almost out of time, um, but we have a virtuoso coming up, an amazing musician, an amazing, uh, passionate, peace-loving Tammy close for us before um, uh, Tezekiah does the final word. Tammy. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so I'm reminded of when we did Avon's celebration, and I was so deeply touched that night. It was December 8th, a couple of years ago. And I remember after I got done listening for, I think it was two and a half hours, I remember feeling like, you know, with Avon, I felt like I was the most special person in her whole life. And everybody else that talked had that exact same feeling about her. And what an absolute beautiful gift that a human being can do that. Like, seriously, that is really, like, what a gift she gave us all. And um, and we're nearing her two-year anniversary of her final transition, so it always feels like it's a tender time, and this day always feels really uh, magnified as well because of her role in this and the significance of this very powerful day and i don't know about you all but i can just feel it like oh my gosh there's so much positive um energy going on today on the planet it's just really wonderful to feel that but i also want to say that i am so deeply deeply grateful for the continuation of avon's mission and passion, and that is through dear Tezakaya, David, Joni, mm -hmm. Marilyn, Masanko, Erica, Natasha, all of, you know, the, the yeah. council, I guess you call it, I was going to call it a board, it's not a board, it's a council, um, and just the beautiful work that you all continue to do, and it feels to me like, um, Avon is very much in spirit guiding us, but it also feels like you all, Tez and David, have really expanded her, her vision and her passion, and what an honor and a joy to be a part of that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You're just makes me weepy. You're just the best. And... I know this is about song, and of course, I play the harp, so I was like, well, what song do I want to play? Well, the song that came to me is actually in angelic mode. This is not a song that I have played for very long. Um, it's called My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. It's an American folk song but I suspect it crosses cultures because I know we're a multicultural group. And there's something fitting today of playing around the angels with Avon and the angels that are continuing to guide the dear angelic organization of Pathways to Peace. And in the interest of time, as you play, Tezekiah, maybe you can just do the closing in and amongst 
because I think we are end of, end of time. Yeah, I'll I'll just play softly, lightly. This is the angels. And you are an angel, Tammy. So oh. thank you. Thank you. And thank you, all of you who came here today to share from your hearts what Avon and Pathways to Peace has meant to you and means to you. And we want you to know that we cannot do it without you. <laughs> that you all lift love support us and that you are incredible peace builders in your own right every one of you please know we see you please know we love you please know we look forward to linking arms and moving forward together to bring peace to our planet, to build a culture of peace. And as Avon always said, let's make peace day every day. We can do that by practicing the peace way, that minute of silence, moment of, for peace. Practice at 12 noon in every time zone. And that, as David has said, as others have said here today, remember, whoever you are and wherever you came from, whatever you're doing, that you are a pathway to peace. So I'd like Tammy to continue to play and you, we can just sit in meditation together or you can leave to go do the rest of your work. But we send you up with love and with peace. Thank you. May peace prevail yeah. on earth. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. May peace May prevail, peace on, prevail earth. on earth. May peace prevail on earth. And as Joni always says, and within your heart. <laughs> so it is. So it is. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. You all are incredible.